Welcome back to On Texas Football, the weekly edition of the Recruiting Breakdown. I'm C.J. Vogel, joined as always by Jerry Hamilton, the man with all the info when it comes to the 25 and 26 recruiting classes here for the University of Texas. And Jerry, big weekend is here. Of course, we'll be going down some big visitors, official visitors in the 25 class, some of the top talent that's on campus this weekend for the 26s, and then we'll wrap it up. I actually made the stop up by Dalen McCutcheon up in Lovejoy earlier this week, so we'll have a few minutes with him, the newest member of the Texas 2025 recruiting class right now. Jerry, of course, as we start to enter the Georgia weekend, Texas has some momentum, of course, number one team in the country. Uh, just beat your big rival by 30 up in Dallas. But that list is looking pretty, pretty lengthy right now. Just broadly, talk to me real quick about where this kind of stacks up in terms of other big recruiting weekends you've seen since covering the Texas Longhorns? Yeah, I think, uh, look, Texas has 21 commitments, ranked top five level class, whether they're five or six at various low spots in our industry rankings. Uh, they're set up now with this start to the season, beating Oklahoma, Michigan, beating Oklahoma. This has pretty much gone about as perfectly according to strip script outside of a couple of preseason running back injuries, one being a big one, the Cedric Baxter, as it could this season. And from a recruiting perspective, they flipped a couple of defensive tackles during in late July and August. So they they're they're addressing the positions of need. And now they sit there with the biggest recruiting weekend I can recall in I CJ, I don't know, two decades. I mean, Ooh. some people might say, hey, when Arch was here, yeah, I get it. But this is out-of-state kids, we're going to get into it, 25s, 26s, arguably a top two or three quarterback and 27 in the country is coming in. I mean, it doesn't get much bigger than this on a recruiting weekend. There's going to be more than 50 combined five stars and four star ranked prospects, ranked right now. And some more guys will be ranked there eventually when rankings are updated, ranked prospects in 25, 6, and 27 combined at this game. That's an astronomical number. That's like what a LSU Alabama game gets, a Bama Georgia game gets, a Texas at Alabama last year may have gotten close to that. This is the biggest recruiting weekend in Austin in a long time. Ooh, and of course, we're going to go down some of those official visitors, some yeah. big time 2025 flip targets, as well as that lengthy list of 26s and 27s here, Jerry. But before we get to there, a quick word about Mark Saunders and Allstate, our sponsor of this week's recruiting breakdown. No doubt when it comes to protecting all your stuff, wouldn't it be great to have one place that protects it all? I got great news for you, Texas fans and even Georgia fans if you're in here. Texas Allstate agent Mark Saunders serving the Austin and Round Rock area in all of Texas. All of Texas, entire, entire state is the only insurance agent you'll need. Everything from your ho home, car, and boat to your motorcycle, RV, and even that ATV if you got it. And I know a lot of Texans do. Call Texas Allstate agent Mark Saunders' office today at 512-218-8571. Are you in good hands? You'll be in great hands. Ryan Wingo, slant, take it to the house hands with more than 35 years of experience that Mark Saunders provides. Texas alum Mark Saunders. Again, if you're looking for someone the local to the Houston, oh, sorry, Austin or Round Rock area and all of Texas, give Mark Saunders a call, 512-218-8571. Perfect. Thank you. And thank you again, Mark Saunders, for sponsoring this week's recruiting breakdown. All right, Jerry, there's three official visitors on campus this weekend. Uh, Five-star Jonah Williams, committed to Texas, will be making his official visit. But outside of him, the number one defensive tackle in all of the land, Justice Terry, uh, a, a name new to Texas recruiting circles, has seen enough and says, hey, I want to go officially visit the Texas Longhorns, as well as uh, Joseph Mbachu, also out of the Georgia area will be coming on campus to see the Longhorns under the lights against the Bulldogs. Big game, big moments, big opportunity for the Texas staff to really start shoring up that defensive line where, hey, you know, you were, you were big game fishing earlier this year. Justice Terry, Joseph Mbachu, I think that takes you to, uh, you know, some whales, some sharks in the, in the water right now with the way that they've been recruiting. Yeah, no doubt. This is a big defensive line weekend for Texas. I mean, uh, it Joseph Bach to Florida commitment, current Florida commitment. It looks like it could be coming down more to Texas, Georgia, Alabama, maybe Florida's in it as well. Florida's still putting up a battle. They've won enough games. Um, and so, and he's been on campus before. This will be his official visit. I think Texas have recruited him 
as hard as they possibly can. They are all in. They love the upside of Mbaktu. Then you get Justice Terry, which was added as an official visitor last week, 6'5", 275 out of Manchester, Georgia. Those not familiar with the state of Georgia, Manchester is on that interstate on the way to Columbus, Georgia from Atlanta, closer to Columbus than Atlanta. One-time USC commitment who right now is Georgia and Auburn. Mm -hmm. um, is the top two I consider the top two Texas. He's never been on campus uh, in, in Austin before. So this is a uh, big deep sea fishing uh, cast. They're casting a big one here and seeing what happens. Well, that's what you have to do if you're Kenny Baker and Steve Sarkeesian. These are the most, these are the biggest, toughest battles in the Southeast region or for these high end defensive linemen. And you got two of them coming in officially. And you got a lot more coming in unofficially this weekend. It is a big defensive line recruiting weekend for the Longhorns on Jonah Williams. He, he This will be his official visit. The five-star safety out of Galveston Ball has had a phenomenal season for the Tours. Uh, tornadoes, Tours short, obviously. Um, he'll be on campus with his family for his official visit. He made a late July unofficial visit when he decided on Texas before committing uh, shortly after that visit. This will be his official visit. Um, and he'll also be accompanied by a couple other Galveston County guys, which we'll get into when we bring up this 25 uh, visitors list. Yeah, let's get to that right now, Jerry. Of course, you see the graphic here made by our fantastic producer, Matthew. Uh, we've gone over Joseph Mbachi. We've gone over Michael Terry, uh, as well as Justice Terry. But there are some tremendous names, especially all of which falling in that front seven there. Riley Pettijon on the outside, Kevin Wynn, Malcolm Simpson, J.V. on Hilson, Walter Mathis. You know, a few of them flip candidates. You, Malcolm Simpson, committed to Nebraska. Javion Hilson just recently backed off of his commitment to Florida State. And Walter Mathis currently committed to LSU. But, Jerry, it feels to me that the names, the, the pedigree, the stars, the rankings, whatever you wanted to see Texas pursue earlier this cycle, they're certainly getting them on campus right now. And it's setting up for plenty of opportunities to fill out this top five class till you know, the, the end of signing day coming up. Yeah, it's potential, I think, to be a top two class if Texas keeps winning games, gets back to the playoffs, uh, and, and just kept, kind of keeps doing their thing. Start with Michael Terry there. You and I have both covered Michael Terry. We believe Texas has a, uh, a pretty nice lead over Nebraska and Oregon Definitely. there, national recruitment. J.B. and Hilson, former Alabama commitment, then former Florida State commitment, is decommitted from Florida State. feel like Texas is in a good spot there, headed into the visit. It's got some competition from all the in-state schools, plus – uh, some of the SEC powers there, but Texas at a pretty good spot from the edge, four-star edge out of Coco. Joseph Bach, too, we mentioned Kevin Wynn out of Greene County, uh, Georgia there, uh, committed to FSU. He's been on campus at South Carolina and Georgia uh, since uh, the season began. The key there is both parents getting on campus for that visit. Um, and then, you know, you have Walter Mathis, which I think is a big one. I, I don't know if we could bring that graphic back up, CJ, but Walter Mathis is another big one. Those are three Georgia guys. I mean, look, Walter Mathis, LSU commitment out of Savannah, Calvary Day. Uh, so you have uh, four Georgia guys counting Justice Terry, Batu, Win, Mathis, Terry, four from the state of Georgia, all four-star, five-star prospects on the defensive line, Hilson out of the state of Florida. Then you have commitments. Down there on the other 25 visitors, Myron Charles, Florida kid, Josiah Sharma, Cali kid. Uh, but that, and then you have Kelshawn Johnson down there coming in with Malcolm Simpson. Malcolm Simpson, a D lineman committed to Nebraska from Hitchcock, Texas, and monitoring him academically. Uh, Kelshawn Johnson from Hitchcock committed to AM, speedy jet wide receiver. Both those guys coming in, they're friends with Jonah Williams. Malcolm Simpson uh, played at Galveston Ball for three years with Jonah Williams. They all grew, grew up playing youth ball together down there in Galveston County. Nick Brooks, another guy from Georgia, offensive lineman committed coming in. I mean, there's going to, and then when we get to the 26 list here in a few minutes, there's going to be close to a dozen players from Georgia that are visiting this weekend. You have saw Jamie French down there. Him and his family are coming in. The Texas commit from Jacksonville, Florida. So, look, Texas and Georgia brings out the stars. If they're both winning and you knew Georgia was going to be winning, you just didn't know if they're going to be undefeated. They haven't looked like Georgia of old, but they still have the talent to win this game uh, for sure. But uh, undefeated number one ranked Texas, a top five ranked Georgia, who's won two of the last three national championships and lost exactly one regular season game in three years. That's going to bring out the stars in an SEC battle college game to everything going on with it. This visitors list in 25 is tremendous as a standalone before we ever get to 26. And on that 25 list, 
Defensive line, a little bit more on that. Texas, ideally, they want to sign four defensive linemen. They have two committed, Josiah Sharman, and Myron Charles. They want to sign four. That number could even go to five if it's the correct five. It could be a developmental guy, a, a guy you know that maybe uh, it takes a little more time, but they will have to be the correct five. They're not going to reach. They four for sure, potentially five. You saw the name Riley Pettijon, the linebacker committed to Ohio State. Texas has two linebackers. They're also after Madden Faramo, who we're still watching to see what he if he may jump in uh, and visit Texas sometime this season, this weekend, or in, in November potentially. We'll see. I think Notre Dame leads USC in Texas there. Uh, but uh, te Texas will take two linebackers for sure, would take the third if it's the right guy. I don't think they'll reach on a linebacker. And we'll see on, in the 25 class if any of those top corners – that are committed elsewhere if Texas gets those guys in. Sark went and saw Dorian Brew, Devin Sanchez, stopped by Shadow Creek to see Kobe Sellers. I think Brew and Sanchez in the Houston area, the targets. Then you have Naeem Offord out of Birmingham Parker, committed to Ohio State, who was just at Oregon last weekend, mm -hmm. which is probably a long shot, but we'll see if he shows up. Then Dijon Lee out of Mission Hills, Alabama commitment. George and Texas still after him. Sark doesn't give up on those 1A guys, especially SoCal guys. You saw it with DeAndre Moore who's now a starter at Texas, will Dijon Lee show up on the, uh, at a game this year, CJ? I think we believe there's a chance he might. Yeah, absolutely. And, Jerry, throughout this entire cycle, I want to go back just a little bit. You've you've mentioned Texas might take up to five on the defensive line yeah. if it's the right five. It's kind of been that recurring theme with the linebackers as well. They want to take up to three if they get the right three. Offensive line, they'll take six if it's the right six. They're sitting at five right now on the offensive line, yep. but a position that we have yet to really talk about in terms of taking up to four, maybe wide receiver, because it's all been finding the one or two or three to get into the class. They're up to three now, but Kelshawn Johnson still a name expected to visit this weekend. There was maybe some cold feet about a week ago. It does sound like, and it's been indicated to me that he's expected to be in Austin for this game this weekend. Is there a chance that we see Texas take up to four wide receivers should Kelshawn and you know, now Dalen McCutcheon and Kalik uh, Lockett and Jamie French all end up in the same class, or is that kind of wishful thinking at this point? I think it's up in the air. I, I really think it's up in the air. I, I don't want to say no, but I do think that's up in the air what Texas is going to do. And um, I think Sark stopped by Hitchcock last week, a couple of weeks ago, spoke with Kelshawn and Malcolm Simpson. Uh, so I think that one's one we're monitoring. I don't think it's a lot Texas takes for. I think it's possible. Got it. Got it. Well, thank you for that update on the 25s, Jerry. Now, let's look ahead to some 2026 kids, because, again, you've mentioned it. This list is mighty, mighty impressive right now. And, again, a lot of kids from out of state. You see it here. Dylan Berryman, the, the talented defensive lineman from Louisiana, who was on campus for a Mississippi State game. Amari Latimer, the running back out of Georgia. Tyler Atkinson, Georgia. And you start looking down this list right now. I know you got some really talented, I mean, I miss Jabari Mack right there, wide receiver from Louisiana as well. Texas starting to really start to stack these Southeast, you know, SEC territory uh, prospects right now. It's a heavy list, Jerry. Let me get your initial thoughts on just what this cr uh, crop of prospects is. And then who are some names to really keep an eye on for Texas moving forward? Yeah, so in 25, what we were just talking about, it was the defensive line. This group, it's the running backs and Tashard Choice. You see Amari Latimer, Tashard Choice stopped by Sandy Creek High and Tyrone, Georgia, near the Atlanta area a couple of weeks ago, saw Amari Latimer. JV and Osborne's already been the one Texas game. He was also at Michigan for the Texas game. He's coming back. You see down below in the other visitors, K.J. Edwards, one-time commitment racing Guillory. K.J. Edwards, a name to watch there as well. Dia Bell, the quarterback commit, is going to be in to help recruit, as well as Chris Stewart. But it's the running backs. Then offensive line, you see five-star John Turntine, who I believe is a Texas lean. Toa Katoa, Nicholas Robertson. I think you could argue they're still they're both Texas leans. Uh, Dylan Berryman. And, and, an interesting one, Noah Clark, four-star out of Durham, North Carolina, Jordan High, announced he was going to be in the game. Tremendous crop of defensive linemen in 2026 in the Tar Heel State, kind of like it was Alabama a couple of classes ago. This D-line group in the state of North Carolina is tremendous in 2026, so you're seeing Texas take some evaluation time and recruit a couple of those guys because they're just really talented. Then you see the five-star Tyler Atkinson, one of the best players in the country regardless of class, at Grayson, teammate of Nick Brooks and Joseph Bach, too. Him and his family are coming in. They've been on campus once before. I think Texas, Georgia uh, are probably the top two. 
Uh, Tennessee's right there. He was at USC last weekend. Clemson's very much in the mix. The family's originally from North Carolina. Auburn is in the mix there as well. You saw last guy, Jalen Lott, one of the top athletes in America in the 26th class. Obviously, both parents are Texas uh, grads. James Lott and his mom played for Jody Conrad in basketball, so one of the mo most talented legacies, Steve Sarkeesian, and those guys will recruit in their time in Austin more uh, most likely, but it's a tremendous group in 26, 2027. Brady Edmonds, obviously, CJ, yeah. you talked to him after the elite camp, one of the very best quarterbacks in 2027. Um, it, it is a star studded list, and we're only we're shooting this on Tuesday, guys. Yeah, there's going to be plenty of names filing in right now. There's one name on the offensive line you mentioned, Jerry, that running backs, offensive line, it feels like. Those are the two positions in 26 that are very well taken care of in terms of visitors list here. Adam Guthrie out of Ohio will be in on campus. Uh, he's a guy that reached out to the Texas staff and said, hey, I've got 25 offers. I've yet to hear from you, but I want to go block for Dia Bell. So you see how this has started to trickle down for the Texas class. You start winning on the field. You start presenting opportunities in NIL and beyond in, in terms of being a student athlete here at the University of Texas. And you go get a quarterback that people say, ooh, I want to go play for him. And it's very similar to what we've seen with Arch Manning and his recruitment. Now with Dia, that's going to be a case that guys are attracted to and want to go play uh, for and, and kind of build around in that class. So that's another name to keep an eye on. Uh, Jamar and Vincent, I mentioned him last week. He will be on campus for the third time this year for a game. I keep a close eye on him as well. But Jerry, ultimately, 26. And you see the three guys in the class right now, Zayla Six, Chris Stewart, Dia Bell. I'm not saying that there's an opportunity or I'm not saying it's expected that Texas will be adding to that 26 class, but we start to see this, you know, kind of timeline for filling out classes start to inch and inch and inch earlier down the road in each cycle for the Texas Longhorns earlier. It's been July, June, late June, July. That's where you see the bulk of the class. Now we saw it in uh, March and April. And, you know, with more and more of these guys getting on campus earlier, Certainly a possibility that you see these earlier commitments for the class of 26. Yeah, I think I think it's potential, uh, potentially there. I think Sarkel, uh, uh, that that's going to be an interesting kind of line for them to walk there because Sark likes to play the long game, likes to make those real longer evaluations. And there's so many guys that they, they're going to be able to get on campus. What happens if two or three 2026s want to commit now or in the next month? What does Texas do? Uh, because Sarkis hasn't had the, that being hadn't been in that position of telling kids to wait this early. Right. This is the year they have that they may be put in that position. So what's Steve Sarkisian, this staff, going to do? Obviously, they have three commitments uh, in twenty six right now with Zealous Hicks, the safety out of Carrollton, the four star plus plus safety, potentially reclass in the twenty twenty five, who's a tremendous player. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what Texas does. But I do agree with you. I think the where, where the trajectory of this program has guys thinking about trying to jump in the boat earlier at Texas. And that gets to be the big question for Sark and the staff is do they kind of change what they've done that's made him so successful and maybe take three, four more guys early in 26? I'm interested yeah. to see what's going to happen with it. Uh, it certainly will be interesting. Uh, before we get to our, uh, our, our our last word from Mark Saunders, Jerry, I did want to mention uh, Brady Edmonds coming in, the 27 quarterback from Huntington Beach, California. That is as legit a quarterback prospect that you will see. He was a guy coming out of the, the elite camp on June 1st, was hearing all sorts of rave reviews about maybe having the prettiest natural throwing uh, you know, motion. He was a guy that you know, we heard several times say, hey, you know, the, the tall quarterback that was uh, uh, really young, Really That's talented it. kid. So yeah. before we wrap up, and of course, we're, we're going to hear from Dalen McCutcheon here in a bit, Jerry, a quick word about Mark Saunders and our, our sponsor, Allstate. Yeah, absolutely. When it comes to protecting all your stuff, wouldn't it be great to have one place that protects it all? I got some really good news for you guys. Texas Allstate agent Mark Saunders serving the Austin and Round Rock and all of Texas is the only insurance agent you'll need. Do what so many other on Texas football uh, family members have done in the past year or so. Call Texas Allstate agent Mark Saunders' office today, 512-218-8571. He'll take care of everything you need. That's your home, car, boat, motorcycle, RV, ATV, if you got that too. With over 35 years of experience, you'll be in great hands with Texas alum Mark Saunders. Again, if you're in the Austin Round Rock area and the entire state of Texas, 
give them a call, 512-218-8571. Perfect, Jerry. And, of course, I, I kind of wanted to just recap this because we've talked about it. It could be the biggest recruiting – uh, you know, game environment atmosphere for Texas in over 20 years, you know, yes. and, and Texas has hosted USC, LSU, Alabama, just in the last decade. This is a top five matchup for Texas. It'll be under the lights. They'll have the drones. They'll have the fireworks. They'll have the flags, the smoke, whatever you want to call it. But more importantly than that, it allows for Texas to get these guys on campus, see the entire city, see the entire campus, right? It's not an 11 a.m. game, but more than that, Jerry, talk about just what this means for guys getting to campus, seeing what they can, and then taking yeah. away good football on the field. Uh, oh, and I think I want to add to what you said. It's the Georgia Bulldogs. Look, I mean, when these kids start the recruiting process and they start making the list of schools, there's about five or six schools that are on 90% of the kids' lists. Georgia, yep. Alabama, Texas now, Oregon, Ohio State, LSU, you get the picture. Michigan, depends on if you're in Florida. You have the Florida schools, maybe Miami. But this is Texas and Michigan, Georgia. Texas and Georgia. I mean, Georgia's playing in Austin. This is a big deal. And this is Kirby Smart, the program that everybody's been gunning for. They've won two of the last three national championships. Um, Georgia's been able to get any kid on campus they want in the last few years. A lot of the kids that will be at this game have been on the Georgia campus multiple times and maybe haven't been to Texas before, have only been to Texas once. I mean, so just think about the magnitude of this for Texas. This is what the SEC winning in these games provides. No different than when Texas goes to Georgia and Texas goes to Florida next year. It's going to be the same in recruiting for those schools uh, if they're both playing well. But Georgia, Texas, top five matchup, ESPN game day, what CDC's done with Bevo Boulevard. Um, good luck finding a hotel room. Yeah. Uh, but I just don't – look, I think kids, parents, maybe parents as, as, as much as the kids are going to walk away saying, that was an unbelievable experience. And, and, and I know my kid could excel at the University of Texas on the football field and in life because of all everything going on in, in, in the city of Austin. It's vibrant. It's booming. Uh, all the companies that have moved in there, the university. This is a big opportunity for Steve Sarkeesian and the staff. And it's not a win or lose game. It's you put on a show. People already know where the program's going under Sark. If you win, it adds more to it. But this is a product of the success, beating Alabama, going to the playoff, coming back and whipping up on Michigan. Um, and now Georgia comes to Austin and all the recruits are following to this game. And, and there's going to be over 100 kids at this game. Like I said, over 50 combined, five stars and four stars. Oof. It's going to be quite the place to be. And, and that's why you're seeing so many kids want to come to this game. And what that does is it gives Sark and his staff a chance to make, make the ultimate impression on not just kids, but parents and circles of prospects. On, on top of that, Jerry, it, it's a top five game. It's Georgia with one loss fighting for their – Chances to go to the SEC championship. Yep. It's really kind of fighting for, for their lives in a way to make the college football playoff for the second year in a row, right? You don't want to be Kirby Smart right now, potentially losing this game, being behind the eight ball for the postseason, but also letting Texas host all of your homegrown, hometown talent and letting that slip away. So the stakes are rise, you know, kind of raised a little bit right now for Kirby Smart and all of this aspects moving forward in college football in general. So I, I think that's one more thing to keep an eye on. Uh, but, Jerry, before we get out of here, we still have Dalen McCutcheon yeah. here at the at, at the end here. Final words, final comments about this game. Yeah, I look, I just think it's the biggest recruiting game in a, a long, long time in Austin. I mean, things have changed so much through social media since Texas was really good, right? through social media, through what Texas, how they present at Bevo Boulevard and the university, the night games, uh, the facility upgrades, uh, everything that goes along with it. I mean, the celebrities are going to be out in full force Saturday. You know they're going to be there. Um, so it, it's going to be an unbelievable atmosphere. And, and I think Texas has a chance here to make an impression beyond 25. It's 2026s. It's 2027s. That's what seasons like this do. It 24 season helped you in 25. This season 
or 23 season help you in the 25 class. This season, the 24 season, can really help you in 26 and 27. That's yep. the way Alabama and Georgia and Ohio State have continued to knock these things out year after year. Texas has a shot at a top two class. If they win Saturday, they're going to have at least the number two ranked class in the country. That's my opinion. That's tremendous if you're a Texas fan. you got to like the sound of that, Jerry. Of course, all of this will kick off 6.30 p.m. in Austin, Texas at DKR. Uh, but before then, you'll have everything that you need to find, and including that that – lengthy visitors list over at ontexasfootball.com as we sign out today. And again, thank you, Mark Saunders and Allstate for sponsoring the recruiting breakdown. Here's a word from Dana McCutcheon, the newest 2025 wide receiver commit in the Texas class. All right. Out of Lucas Lovejoy, Texas, newest Texas wide receiver commit, Dana McCutcheon made the decision. What about 72 hours ago? How's it feel to be a part of the Texas class? It feels great. You know, it feels like there's been a lot of weight off my shoulders and I feel confident in the 2025 class of Texas. So going back just a little bit, you know, I know you'd been committed to Florida State. How often had you been in contact with Texas? I know you visited for Mississippi State game. Uh, was that really when you started seeing the ball start to roll a little bit more towards Texas then? Yeah, me going down to Mississippi State game to being able to see the culture uh, from Coach Sarkeesian and being able to see the team really started the ball rolling. And then obviously being on the phone with Coach Jackson just seeing hearing how things is on his end just made me feel real comfortable with Texas. You got to see that game up and close and personal. Was there any main takeaway that you had, whether it be about the, the, the wide receivers, the, the stadium, the city, anything like that? I mean, the main takeaway is just obviously the wide receivers, just seeing my position as where Coach Jackson sees me as where DeAndre Moore is, just seeing him be able to run vertical, be able to catch the ball, score touchdowns, just made me confident. I'll, oh, I'm going to be playing that position, so I feel, I feel pretty pleased about it. Yeah, of course. Now that you're in the Texas class, have you been in contact with any of the guys that are also committed to Texas? I saw a Khalid Lockett. I was pretty excited on Twitter. I mean, yeah. Uh, KJ Lacey as well. Who, who, who are, are you close with any of those guys currently? Uh, main person I'm close to is Khalid. I've been playing football with him since young, so that's the main one. And obviously it's KJ. I talked to him a little bit. Um, then the other recruits I've been talking to on Instagram. Yeah, and of course, you got to watch Texas play Oklahoma this weekend. Mm -hmm. Give me your thoughts on that game. I know it's a big one, and you had a big game yourself this weekend. But two wins in the weekend for you. What was that like? Oh, it was great. And being able to see OU lose, man, I have a lot of homeboys there. So it was a great uh, great scene to be able to see Texas beat OU. I know that now that you're committed to Texas, there's been some conversations about getting that Lovejoy offense back up at Texas now with Parker. That's right. What was his conversation to you like? And uh, have y'all talked about playing together on the same field, obviously, together? I mean, it's been great. Obviously, like he says, like getting the band back together. We've been together, being able to talk it out and play together. I mean, it's just a great thing to have. And of course, for you, what's what's next for you as, you know, the second half of your senior season kind of is upon us now? What's still left for you on the field? Um, obviously, just perfecting my craft. Obviously, trying to get bigger, faster, and stronger because obviously going into the SEC is going to be a bigger level for me. So obviously, that's just the main focus is to run everything full speed. And any games that you're going to be headed to, I know Texas plays Georgia this weekend. Are you going to be back down in Austin for that or anything down the road? Yes, sir. That's the game I plan on coming down to. Well, there you go. Should be a good one. And then one final one, Coach Sark and what you've seen from this wide receiver group. What's kind of stood out to you about Texas and the way that they get all of their guys you know, involved? Um, just the way he's able to put uh, key players in the game, like obviously like Silas Bolden, being able to have him as a jet sweep type of guy, being able to get him the ball, and obviously with Isaiah Bond and then Matthew Golden, just being able to see them, how they're able to be in the inside and outside, being able to get the ball. That's what I've been very impressed by Coach Sarkeesian by using key pieces. Perfect. And that's 2025. Newest Texas wide receiver commit, Dalen McCutcheon.